Hey everyone, in this video I want to dive into using the Azure Pricing Calculator. A lot of people have actually asked me to kind of cover how we think about planning out or what the resources are and actually using the calculator. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share really is appreciated and please hit that bell icon to get notified of new content. Now, if I already have resources deployed, Azure has a phenomenal set of solutions to be able to see, well, what am I spending my money on? If I was to quickly jump over to, hey, I'll look at a subscription, I can always go and look at my cost management and billing over here in the corner. From that cost management and billing, we can go to our cost management. I can look at my cost analysis. And from here, I can look at different subscriptions. For example, here it's doing a quick check of all my subscriptions and I can select one. So I look at my dev subscription. I can look at my cost analysis. That was already showing me kind of an overview of the cost. But I can see, hey, where I'm trending in terms of my costs. But I can also change the view. So instead of this accumulated costs, I could change it, for example, well, cost by resource. What am I paying for each resource? And it gives me kind of the detail down that right hand side. I can look at my daily costs, cost by service. And for all of these things, if I actually go back to accumulated, at the bottom it's showing me these nice little pie charts of, well, what types of services consuming, what amounts of money, what regions, what resource groups. I could kind of click on any of these to then go and get the data. Okay, so storage, based in the different regions, what resource groups. So I have phenomenal insight. Even things like log analytics, there's now log analytics insights that will show me, well, why do I have this amount of data in log analytics and why is it costing me this amount of money? So it's really super easy now to see what am I spending? I can set budgets that trigger certain things based on what I've spent or even where I'm trending to maybe alert me, email me tons of resources about what I've already deployed and why it's costing me. But what about if I'm trying to work out what is this going to cost me based on a new deployment? The first thing I have to have done is a discovery of the requirements and have an architecture. I can't just go to the pricing calculator and start plugging in random things. Garbage in is gonna be garbage out. I can't just guess. I have to have a quality architecture of what I'm deploying in addition to understanding, well, the number of instances, the sizes, how they're running, the types of interactions, because all of those things are actually going to impact my cost. So I would think about there are things you don't pay for, like virtual networks, resource groups, subscriptions, role based access control, policy, Azure Monitor metrics but realize those things could still impact cost. For example, virtual networks are free, but if I go and create a whole bunch of separate virtual networks and then want them to talk, well, then I have to peer them or use private endpoints or something else. Well, now there's data charges to go between them. So while I don't pay for virtual networks, they may impact my overall cost if I want them to start communicating. There's also certain things that are just free, like Cosmos DB. I can pick a certain account that I get a certain amount of free RUs every month. I'm not going to include those types of things. So the first step when I think about, okay, my architecture, you have to understand your resources. Now you could think about very, very simply, okay, a, a virtual machine. That's a resource. Now that type of resource is actually used by many other things. I could have things like, well, a, a virtual machine scale set uses virtual machines. So I'll have a scaling number of them. Uh, Azure Kubernetes service uses that. Plus, I'll also have kind of a management plane cost if I'm using one of the SLA based options. App service plans, they use VMs, but they have their own costing model. Azure Virtual Desktop uses these virtual machines. Now, these virtual machines have a whole set of characteristics to them. Remember, we have different SKUs. We have different sizes. We have well, how many of them are we actually running 
and how many hours kind of per month. And this is important because on premises, we always just think about things run all the time. If I'm trying to work out my costing, especially when I start using auto scale like VMSS, Azure Kubernetes service with cluster auto scale, Azure Virtual Desktop that can actually turn things on on Connect and many more, well, I need to know how many are running and for how many hours. That's going to hugely impact the actual cost. So these types of things I have to know before I try and actually work out the cost. And then I think, okay, so that's just the VM, but then I'm going to have typically at least an OS disk. I can use ephemeral storage potentially, but likely you're not doing that. Well, again, that has a certain skew of performance. It has a certain size. And when I start getting into things like virtual machine scale sets and AKS where it's creating and deleting them, well, these disks will get deleted and created as the VM that connects to it is deleted and created. I might also have optional data disks. And I might have kind of multiple of those. And once again, they have a skew, a size. And once again, the hours they exist will kind of correspond with that actual virtual machine. From these various services, I may tie in and have things like snapshots, point in time views of those. I might use things like backup. So here we care about, well, for these, What's the delta, i.e. what's the churn, the rate of change, because that's going to, again, impact what am I paying for? I pay for the storage of those services. So if it's a high churn, a high rate of change, there's more changes to store, well, that, that's going to cost me money. I might layer on different types of security solutions. So maybe I have things like Defender. Now, there are Defender solutions across the whole gambit of Azure services, sure, storage accounts and virtual machines, and there's a huge number of these. Well, these cost me money. It's going to impact my cost. What services am I using? Am I sending data to things like Azure Monitor Logs? So I can think about, well, okay, yeah, I've got Azure Monitor Logs. We think of that as log analytics. Well, if I'm sending to that, what's the amount of data I'm sending to that? And then I think about, well, what's the retention? We start paying charges if we keep it for more than 31 days. I believe that's the number. And again, I'm drawing a VM, but this is not unique to virtual machines. Many other types of services, you're going to have all these other types of considerations. Well, what are the other services that actually surround it? I mentioned things like Azure Monitor Metrics. Well, am I doing alerting? There's different costs for if I'm alerting off of metrics or if I'm alerting off of logs. So I maybe, well, what am I alerting off of those various things? This VM has a network. So there is kind of a VNet object. Now, I don't, I don't pay for the VNet. Maybe I should kind of add some dollar signs. So all of these things, these are, these are all costs. All of this stuff, I'm paying for all of these different elements all over the place. I don't pay for the VNet. Now, remember, I have kind of a NIC, a network interface card that connects me into the VNet. Remember, if I'm connecting to another VNet and I peer them, well, there's ingress and egress charges for that on both of the VNets. If I was using private endpoints instead to maybe do some proxy service, I pay for the data over that. Hey, I have my on-premises location and I connect it. Well, if I'm using Express Route, well, then I have my kind of Express Route gateway. That costs me money. I have the circuit. That costs me money. I have data egress. So most of the times you do Express Route, you're going to do a metered connection. So I'm going to pay for the egress. 
So we have egress. Now egress, we pay for in other scenarios as well. For example, if it's just going out talking to the internet, and there's different types of, hey, am I doing it on the Microsoft backbone, or am I trying to get to an ISP as quick as possible, hot versus cold potato. Um, but I, I pay for egress. So even if it's not here, if it's just general types of egress, well, there are charges associated with that. So an express route, hey, egress, the circuit charge, the gateway, obviously it's not including the cost of your ISP. If I was doing a site-to-site -site VPN, there'd be a site-to-site -site VPN gateway you're spending money on, and there'd be egress. I might be offering types of services. So I've got, oh, okay, actually I have a, a standard load balancer. Well, I pay for the standard load balancer. There's a certain cost associated to that. Maybe I have an external and it's a public IP. Hey, public IPs, I pay for those. So you kind of see it, it kind of builds. There's all these different elements that cost me money. I have to have those in my architecture. And then obviously realize there's other types of service. Hey, I'm using a storage account. Well, there's a SKU here. There's a resiliency, i.e. the replication. I pay based on that. What is the kind of data I'm writing? For some of them, I actually pay based on provision size. I might use databases. Well, they will have different costing and charging models, different types of maybe async read replicas in different regions. I might be using Azure Site Recovery for my virtual machine. The point is there's, there's a whole number of elements. So it's not just like, hey, I go to the pricing calculator and go click, 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 click. You need this. I need to understand the architecture of all of the components. I need to understand the sizes, the numbers, the hours they're running when I start thinking about auto scale and the other services like maybe Azure Firewall. Well, it can scale based on the data going through it. And that gateway, there's all these components. So I have to have a quality architecture is my point. Quality architecture, I know all the components, I know the sizes, I know the numbers. You're not gonna get it exactly right. But you can kind of build in, hey, I'm within 10, 20%. I'll tune these as we actually start running and we work out the real workloads. But the point is I have to start with some quality architecture and information based on discovery to actually go and use the pricing calculator. And obviously I'm not including things like Azure AD licensing, P1, P2 for things like conditional access, um, identity protection, PIM, MFA, that's completely separate. Pricing calculator is not gonna consider things like Azure AD, but that's generally tenant level, wouldn't be included as part of just a project. So think of all of the different things that you have. Once you've done that, Great, I can go and actually use the pricing calculator. So if we jump over to the pricing calculator, so the first thing we actually wanna do is up here in the corner, we have sign-in. So you wanna sign in, because what the sign-in is gonna do is actually enable me to save the various estimates I'm gonna create. Now what I'm gonna do quickly, let's just have a look. So you notice I've already got some. So it, it does actually kind of save between sessions. So I'm quickly going to collapse all of them and delete everything. I wanna start with a clean estimate. Now notice I can have multiple estimates. I can click this little plus on the tab and I would get a new tab. So I can have multiple estimates kind of go in at once, put in different names, etc. but I'm just gonna kill those and just start with my one little estimate. Now before I do anything, if we actually kind of look, we can search for products, great. It also has example scenarios. So if I think about, I was saying about those architectures and I have to understand all the components. So it's trying to help you. Hey, you're using CI CD for containers. Well, hey, there's these different components and pipelines, it's showing me the different products that are part of that. Uh, modern data warehouse, hey, here are the products. Azure web apps, here are the products. So this might help in some of the more complicated scenarios to get started. And if I think one of those kind of matches, I can go to this add to estimate and just get those elements added to the estimate. Then I could then tweak and change them as required. 
So that's kind of a, a very useful thing just to get going. You'll notice also I have kind of saved estimates available to me up here. So that's because I'm logged in, I can go and see them. So let's just start off. Let's start, notice it's showing featured. Virtual machines are very, very common. So I could select virtual machines and it's added it to my estimate. Now based on the region, so sometimes pricing will vary by region. So I'd make sure I pick the right region. I would pick, hey, is it Windows or Linux? Because that impacts OS licensing. There's also options to include other products like SQL and BizTalk in that licensing. What is the tier? Standard, you're typically going to use. What is the instant series? So I can pick from all the different series. I can then pick the particular size I want. I'm gonna go and pick an S type just so it will show me all the different types of disks that are actually available to me. Without an S, I can't see the premium SSD or ultra disk, for example. Notice it's asking me, how many virtual machines do you want? I can put in a number. It's also basing it on how many hours is it running. Now, this is based on a typical 730 hours in a month. Remember, maybe I've got auto scale. Sometimes I have eight running, Sometimes I have four running. So maybe I'd average that out to six. Maybe it's not running, even at average 730 hours. I can do different combinations of this. The key point is you need to understand sort of how many total hours am I using of this particular type of virtual machine. So I'm averaging out to, hey, six are running 24 seven. Maybe sometimes there's four, sometimes they're eight, but it's averaging out to six. So you need to understand that. You can do things like reserved instances, which will obviously lower the price. If I have Azure Hybrid Benefit, well, I don't pay for the OS licensing part. So notice the licensing disappears. Note that licensing will also disappear if I say, well, this subscription is actually part of a dev test. So with dev test pricing, we don't pay for the licensing either, because it's just for dev test. We don't have to pay for that that's been linked to maybe like a, an MSDN, for example. So we have that option. So that's just the compute VM. But I know, unless I'm just using ephemeral storage, I need at least one disk. So okay, for the OS disk, let's use, let's say it's a premium SSD, and then I pick the size. Typically, we think about 128 gigabytes. A lot of our images are kind of 100 gigabytes or something. So that has a certain price per month and I know I need one of those. So that's for the OS disk. Note, if it's something like standard, HDD or SSD, there's also gonna be, well, what are the storage transactions? Because you pay for those as well. With premium, I don't. I just pay for the disk and that, that's all I need. If ever you're unsure, go and look at the pricing page for the particular product. For example, manage disks over here, if I scroll down and look at the pricing, well, here's the premium. Yep, it just shows me the pricing. But for standard SSD, at the bottom, you notice it has this, hey, we charge 0.2 of a penny per 10,000 transaction units. So there's kind of that additional use. And that's the same for standard hard disk drive. So that's what that means. So here I have to know a little bit about, well, what are the interactions actually with the disk? I can also say, well, I'm using snapshots. Okay, well, what is the size of the snapshot? Because remember, I pay for the storage of those. So I have to kind of have some idea of, well, how much snapshot storage am I gonna be storing? So that's how many snapshots, and what's the delta, what's the change going to be actually in those? It even gives me information about all well, different types of network bandwidth I might have going um, between regions, I get a certain amount free. If I start going up, then I start paying for it. Or maybe it's out to the internet. If it's out to the internet, am I using cold potato? I am staying on the Microsoft network kind of as long as possible. Or hot potato, get it off to the internet as quick as possible. And once again, we'd see things like, well, public internet is slightly cheaper than keeping it on the higher performance, higher reliability, Microsoft Global Network. But that was just one disk. Okay, well that's the OS disk,
but I know I want a different size disk for the data disks for the virtual machine. Well, how do I add that? That's just the VM. Well, once again, I can kind of collapse this down. So now I need to go and add, it's actually a storage account, which seems kind of a little bit weird, but I can go and add a storage account. And then for the storage account, I change the type to a managed disk. So now I could say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna add a managed disk and it's gonna be a premium SSD, but I could add ultra disk as well. I don't use ultra disk for the OS disk, but I could for data disk, but I'll say a premium. And actually the premium is gonna be bigger. I need maybe a higher performance. Maybe this is for performance tier, or it could be the capacity as well. I'm gonna say a P60. Now remember number of disks, well, I'm gonna say I've got six of these. Again, they might get created and deleted, but on kind of average, I'm gonna have six of these. And again, I'm not using reserved instances here, but once again, I have things like, well, adding snapshots, point in time. Because of the size, I can have an optional on-demand disk bursting that costs me a certain amount of money, and I then pay for the bursting. If you're curious about that, I did a whole video about managed disks, so you should go and check that out. I can make them shared, but again, that adds additional money. So now I'm thinking about, well, I'm adding those disks. Now, if I needed yet another type, maybe I've got another data disk, I can clone. I can hit this little button here, and this will clone this item, so I could now go and maybe do a different type of data disk. So if I collapse that, now I've got the managed disk again, and maybe now, well, for this managed disk, maybe it's more of a log disk or something, it's a bit smaller. So now I've got that item, but it's still six, but now I've got that added as well. And I would just really carry on going through all of the different components I have. And obviously there's a huge number of them. Maybe I'm using things like Defender. So I could say, hey, Defender. So there's Azure Defender. It's adding that to my estimate. And I would say, well, what ones am I doing? Hey, maybe it's they, my six servers in here. Maybe I know I'm using SQL Database. Maybe I'm using it for storage. I would just go and add all of these different items in. Likewise, maybe I'm using Backup. So if I do Backup, there's Azure Backup. And then I tell it, well, what types of workload am I protecting? Hey, I'm protecting Azure VMs, or is it SQL Server on Azure VMs, or Azure Files? And I'm gonna protect six VMs. Well, how much data is there? Okay, well, let's say each of them actually has, we'll actually say it's, we're going into terabyte territory now. I don't remember how much I did on the data disk. Let's say two terabytes. That has a certain price. The retention, well, how long am I keeping it for? That's going to have some impact on the price. What is the data churn? It's going to try and work out on average what is the expected actual total amount of data. It's helping me with this. So it's rather than me having to kind of work out exactly what the churn is, it knows what's pretty common. And am I replicating LOS, GRS, or read access GRS? And again, that, that impacts the price. So we can kind of see those things all building up. If I was doing Azure Monitor, well, then there's gonna be information about, well, what is that? So if I do Azure Monitor, it's gonna be, well, how much data do you have? What's the retention? So I could think, okay, here's Azure Monitor. I can have the number of API calls, notifications, so types of alerts and hooks I'm actually doing. I have all of these kind of items down here. That's for metric queries and alerts. But I could change it to log analytics. Now it's thinking more about the amount of data. And once again, it's kind of helping me. It's saying, look, an average VM ingests one to three gigabytes of data per month. So if I said, hey, I've got my six VMs on average, I might use its number and say two gigabytes. And maybe, do you know I'm just doing the first 31 days. There are no additional days of retention. So that would be my number. And we just carry on going through this hey, I'm gonna do express route. Well, the express route requires a gateway. So the first thing I would do is go to my gateway. My gateway type would be an express route gateway. What is my SKU? Hey, it's AZ resilient. 
That number of hours, uh, well, maybe it's 730. It's up all month. I'm not doing site to site tunnels. But here I can start to think about, OK, if I'm having that inter VNet transfers, before we come to the circuit later on, OK, there's my VPN gateway for the express route. Now I need the express route circuit itself. So I can now go to express route. OK, that's been added. And here we go. What's my circuit? Now, typically, we're just going to do an express route circuit. If we're really big, we might be doing an express route direct port, which is going to be a 10 or 100 gigabit per second. And then the standard circuits we add are just free because we're paying for the port pair actually in the meet me. But if I did premium, I would then pay for additional premium circuits. But I'm just going to do a regular express route circuit. Zone is based on the country. So for example, US, I think Europe, they're all zone ones. Do I need the premium SKU? Well, I'm just going to say standard SKU. Remember, the data plan is metered. I pick a speed. So I'm going to do one gigabit per second. And then I have to pay, because it's metered, well, I have to pay for the data outbound. So how much data outbound, oops, didn't mean to do that. How much data outbound am I doing? Uh, let's just say two terabytes. That could be tiny, don't know. But I need to, again, have some good numbers. Global reach add-on is if I have multiple circuits in different geographies, I want to connect between those offices using the Microsoft backbone. So again, we add those elements. And, and you just keep doing this. I mean, the whole point is you go through that whole list, adding all these things. I'd add standard load balancers. I would add IP addresses. And I basically end up with this list of things. I get this estimate. I can expand everything kind of with this. I can collapse them all. I can reorder. Maybe, hey, I'm trying to bring different things to make it clearer. Well, actually, you might want backup above Defender and monitor above Defender. I can kind of rearrange how I have this estimate. I can also add things like the exact SKU, which might make it easier to order, and the resource ID as well. And that will then show under the pricing. So if I expand one of these, what we now see down here is you see the SKU and the resource ID. So it's actually going in and adding that to that overall calculator estimate. I can add things like support, different levels. I could change my licensing program. Do I have an EA? If I have an EA, for example, what, what does that change? And then I pick the agreement I actually have. I don't have any. I could do a Microsoft customer agreement. But I'm just going to go back to the kind of pay-as-you-go standard pricing. At this point, I can save it. So I could save as my cost calc sample estimate. So this will then be available because I've signed in. At any time, I could go back. I could share this. This will give me a URL that I could then give to someone else. I could copy this to my clipboard. And then they'd be able to see this estimate. I can export it to an Excel spreadsheet. So that will now actually go and create a detail that I can download. And there's my Excel spreadsheet that has all this same data in it. And that's really the cost calculator. So if I go to my saved estimates now, well, you can see my new estimate I've saved. So I'm good. I can really come back to this at any time. I can clean up those ones I've saved at any time I want. So I could delete that one, delete. I'm just going to keep my latest cost calc sample. And that's it. I mean, that's the whole goal around this cost calculator. Key point is obviously you need to have a good understanding of your environment, what the architecture is going to be before you try and use the cost calculator, or it's just garbage in, garbage out. If you have an account rep or a partner reseller, they can probably help you with this. Again, you might be working with an architecture, they will go and help work out what the pricing will be of these various things. But that's it. That's the Azure pricing calculator. There's no real magic to it. It's just if you have a good understanding of what you're going to use, the size you're going to use it, when, how often it's running, if you've got all of those different things, I can just plug that in and it will spit out kind of that estimate value. Hope this was useful. Till next time, take care.